All right, we are live with Chaz Pippet. Once you jump in, we're gonna give give people some time to uh, to jump into the stream here. Once you get in, leave a comment. Let us know. Uh, let us know where you're from. Hey, hey. Once you get in, uh, put your name in the chat or put your name in the comments and let us know where you're from. Saya, what is up? How are you? So I don't see the link on Facebook yet, Brandon. Just so you know. All right, let me check uh, my Facebook. Are you recording this too? Dan, what's yeah, up? Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm recording it. One live on Facebook now. All right, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. We're getting uh, all of our lives pushed out to people. So you see yourself on Facebook Live right now? This video um, is live I'm not sure if it'll let me see it. It just says that we're live. No, I see it. I see it now. Yeah, it only it only shows me this video is live. All right, I'm just going to get it retweeted from all our stuff. All right, you see our Facebook Live, good. All right, cool. Jen, how's it going? Thanks for jumping in. All right. All right, one more second. I'm going to get another tweet out, and then we're good to go. Cool. All right. to my yeah we i can see it live on twitter right now yeah i see it too All right. I'm ready when you are. Sorry, you just right. have to with Brandon. That's great. All right, we got Chaz Pippet on with us. Um, but the reason that we're doing this is because I obviously use uh, Chaz's products. I use the Rebel Rack, um, really big into rotational movement and, and training rotational acceleration to make hitters better. And for my hitters, I just wanted them to get a chance to, one, put 
put a face to the name that I always talk about at lessons. And two, just hear directly from him on, you know, why the rack is beneficial, um, why training rotational movement is beneficial, how it helps hitters get better. Um, and just let him talk about his journey through hitting and, and how he came to develop the, the rotational movement training that he uses with all his hitters. So I'm going to kind of let him give you an, an intro about who he is, where he's at, and um, and how he's helping hitters get better from all age groups. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, for having me on, uh, Brandon. You know, we've known each other, God, I don't know, going on like five years now, I think, maybe even longer. I can't even remember. And, you know, I've kind of seen – your journey live, which has been really cool. So I have some questions for you too. Um, you know, you've got a full out facility with a hit tracks at your, at your freaking house and that's unreal. So, um, you know, you're doing a lot of a lot of good work helping people too. Um, you know, a little bit about me. I started baseball rebellion 15 years ago. Uh, it's crazy to say I'm 39 now. And, um, I was working in a barn and, I'm not going to lie to you, it was awful. I mean, six, seven days a week, every week. Um, you know, I was thinking about going to law school, and then I told my surgeon father that I was going to try to teach kids how to hit and actually shoot basketballs better, and he looked at me like I was insane. And uh, that was a tough conversation. But, you know, it's ended up working out, which is cool. Um, and the, it's funny, when I got my first facility, Brandon, I don't know if I ever told you this, I was so excited that I had a bathroom and a microwave. Like that's what I was so excited about because for six years I had worked outdoors. Five and a half years I'd worked outdoors. Winter, like if it was cold, under 45 degrees, I would literally go early, chop a tree down and build a fire for the moms and dads to sit by. And it was wild, dude. It was wild. Um, but I remember showing my parents on like a phone video of my building. Um, and I was like, I've got a bathroom. And that's just such a weird way to work. Um, I don't recommend it. But, you know, once we got through that and, and I started looking at my I started looking at my hitters in the barn and I realized like they just weren't they were better than a lot of the other hitters around, but they weren't getting better as fast as I wanted them to. And I was like, man, there's there's got to be something I'm missing, um, you know, because, you know, arrogantly, I looked at these kids and I'm thinking to myself, man, I could dunk when I was 12 years old. How in the world is this kid who may never dunk a basketball, who isn't isn't very athletic? How is this kid going to do better than I did if I teach him what I did that didn't work? And I really thought about that. And I was like, man, I've got to do I've got to change what I'm doing because they have no shot of success if I teach them what I did. Um, right. I, can't, I can't be the model. I, I was 23 and done with baseball. So. I was like, all right, we got to do something different. So I started looking at a ton of video. And back then, Jose Batista, Batista and Carlos Gomez were kind of like the coolest hitters I could find. They weren't huge guys. Gomez got bigger towards the end of his career. But um, they were just athletic and explosive. And their back foot was coming all the way off the ground. And their, and their bodies just moved so differently than I, like, realized hitters could do. And, you know, I started changing – my hitters and I remember I told uh, I told my wife Megan I was like I'm gonna make some changes at work uh, with what I'm teaching and I'm gonna tell everybody this week and I got fired by 25 30 percent of my clients like right then and because they were like well, why have you been teaching my kid the wrong thing like what do you mean this isn't right and they were they were mad and I was like look I thought it was right. Like, it's not like I did it on purpose, but, you know, unfortunately, when people trust you with their children, uh, they don't take kindly to mistakes. And, um, you know, the ones that stayed, they really got better. And I remember, think back to the stuff I was teaching then, and it's just so rudimentary that comparatively to what we're doing now, you know, it's a miracle we had anybody do well. Um, we we're getting kids committing to small colleges and, you know, a couple kids a couple of kids were playing at some decent schools, like against smaller schools, and, and they had really improved. But we're talking D2s, D3s. Not that's bad. That's good. Um, and they'd definitely gotten better. Um, but I mean, I was I had a laptop and I was 
taking video with a little thing called a flip camera. Like cell phones didn't even have real cameras on them yet that I remember. You know, like it definitely wasn't this magical iPhone. You know, I promise you that. So um, I had this thing called a flip camera and a, this Acer laptop that was just had the biggest screen I could find. And I was in the, in the snow, outdoors, open air with a roof and like some walls. Um, I didn't even have four walls. Now I think about it. A roof and two walls. Um, and I'm showing these kids videos next to a fire while their mom freezes. And I say mom because, you know, 99% of them, 90% of the people that brought their kids were moms. Um, but it was just, it was just such a, a cool time looking back. And some of my athletes, I mean, I still work with from the barn. I mean, and they're in college now or they're just heading to school. Um, and, and seeing them kind of go further is, it's just been really, really cool. Um, but what really changed everything for me was when I came up with this bad boy, the rebels rack. And I realized that if you try to change a hitter while they're hitting, the hitting actually gets in the way of the change. And let me explain that just a little bit further. The, the, the hitter knows a good hit from a bad hit generally, right? So unless they're like a complete novice. So if the hitter knows a good hit or a bad hit, no matter what you say or what you do, when they hit a ball, they decide whether or not it was a good hit or a bad hit. Like they evaluate it. And that evaluation crushes what I was trying to do. Because let's say I'm trying to get a hitter to – who cares? Move their back foot when they turn, whatever. Well, that's obviously a different move, different idea. And so when they do it, initially, they tend to hit worse than when they don't do it. Because when they don't do it, that's comfortable and normal for them. And so they are in their minds evaluating, is this idea working or is this idea not working? And so the hitting was distracting them from what I was actually wanting them to do, whatever skill it was. So with the rack, we're able to take the hitting away so that the hitters can really focus on how they're moving, feel the changes, understand the verbal cues, understand what they're seeing in the mirror, understand what they're learning from, from, from what their feet are telling them if they're doing them barefoot or with shoes on, uh, just kind of depends, and feeling how their balance changes and how their speed changes. And even videoing them saying, like, this is how you started. Now look how much faster you are now. And then looking at their parents to be like, do I look faster? And the parents like, yeah, that's way faster. You yeah, know, for sure. And them getting that feedback that's truly about how they are doing something and how they are controlling and taking ownership of these new ideas instead of, oh, I turned really fast, but they made a tiny little mistake and it made them hit the ball bad. So they're like, oh, it hit terrible. That's no good. And yeah. that's been really transformational for, for not only for me and my business, but this the style of hitting that we teach and the style of rotational skill that we teach and how fast we can get improvements. I mean, I had a kid today. Um, he had his eval uh, last two weeks ago. He did his movement lesson. One lesson with me did not hit a ball. 40 minutes of all movement, 40 minutes, no hitting at a hitting lesson. And then he was given homework to do a hundred turns a day. He did them and he came back today and he hit the ball six miles an hour harder and 48 feet further. And we didn't change. We didn't do a different hitting drill. We didn't hit off a tee. We didn't change his hands. I didn't change his bat. We even used the same cage and the same ball. And well, balls, we hit more than one ball. But my point is the dad was like, I can't believe this. He goes, if you would have told me this at your eval, I wouldn't have even come back because I would have been like, you're crazy. This is Precisely. And I said, well, honestly, you know, your son's not very good at what I want you to do, what I want to do anyway. So if he if he makes the movement changes that we worked on for the first 10 minutes and he practices those 100 times a night for seven nights, 
imagine what he's going to be like next week. And the dad and the kid were like, wow. Cause I was like, cause you're still not very good at what I want you to do. And you're, st- and you're way better at hitting already. And they had never really thought about it that way, you know? And a lot of parents and players, they want this get, get hit quick scheme, you know, get microwave hit. effect. Yeah. It's like, yeah, man, like uh, that ain't really how it works. Like we got to get better at how you rotate and then your body's going to accept the new speed and then you're going to hit better, rotate better while you're hitting, which is really what you're doing. You're rotating better while you're hitting in front toss and then you'll do it in BP and then you'll do it off a machine and then you'll do it in practice away from us and you'll develop your your hitting vocabulary and you'll become fluent in how you hit. And that and that's what we need. You know, we need to build fluent rotators. Um, you know, my my sister was fluent in Spanish for a while. She lived in Argentina for a minute. And um, she said she knew she was fluent when she would dream in Spanish. Right. <laughs> well, I want hitters to be fluent in hitting and dream and dream in rotation. Like truly understand how they move, how they must move and one or two keys to their movements that give them the best opportunity to execute that movement in a game. And the more we train it, the better we get at creating and building these movements and novice hitters, and then giving better and giving an actual movement solution that will work in a game to our best hitters. You know, piggybacking off of what you said earlier about you know, the hitter who's going to go right back to evaluating the batted ball. Uh, and that's where the rat comes into play because I, t- I tell all the, the hitters that I'm training, how often do you rotate the same way you rotate when you're hitting a ball without actually hitting the ball? And they're, all, they're thinking about, I'm like, think about this. What do you do when you hit the ball? You swing, you rotate. But when do you do that movement when you're not trying to hit a ball? And they all kind of, light bulb goes off and I'm like, well, never. And I'm like, exactly. Why haven't we ever thought about training the same move you're going to make when you're trying to hit a ball? Why haven't we tried to make that better before you step in the box to try to hit it? And yeah. Light bulb goes off again. And I'm like, if, if you can't, perf- if you can make that move better, you can make that move more efficient and you can make that move stronger and faster. It's going to have a direct relationship to you hitting the baseball or hitting the softball. And at first, that's that's how everybody looks at it. When I'm talking about, all right, we're going to do movement work. We're going to grab the rat. And, and then they're like, why aren't we hitting, you know? Why aren't we hitting right. at the first lesson? I'm like, because you, if you can do this better before I throw the ball at you, and then you're trying to focus on go right back to what feels comfortable, right back to focusing on evaluating yourself whether you hit the ball well or not, because perfect example tonight, I had three lessons, all of them except for one, brand new clients have had one evaluation first night they come in to hit softball player in sixth grade comes in she has no lower half in her eval no posture she's very tall stands up hits everything with her arms after one night of using the rack mom's watching it and mom's just blown away yeah Um, posture gets better lower half starts to get involved in the swing so on eval she's 54 miles an hour 123 feet Oh, really the only ball she hit hard in the air in that round and it was just kind of luck because I threw it up and she didn't have to reach down and go get it. Um, tonight she goes 56 miles an hour, 145 feet. We didn't change anything really about her swing in, in our lesson. We just made her move better, made her rotate better. And she bought in. She was, she was fully bought in. She tried to get better at the movements. She tried to, she, she was open to everything I was telling her. And I yeah, think you proved really yourself in exactly you prove Mom dies in when she's like oh my goodness i don't i've been trying to get her to use her hips for six years and in an hour less than she's already doing it better and i'm yeah. like yeah we didn't hit a ball but for the last 10 minutes but here's the, here's the key to that is as soon as she tried to hit the first ball i asked her i said did you turn well and her answer was based off of whether she hit the ball well so she re- went right back to what you were saying if she didn't hit the ball well she wasn't even focused on what her movements were. So we would alternate. All right, you're going to do a, I'm going to pitch you a ball. You're going to do it. You're going to time it with the rack. Make sure you get a good move off. And then you're going to grab the bat. I'm going to pitch you another ball. See if you can get the same move off. And we would just alternate. Every other swing was rack turn, 
pick up the bat, rack turn, pick up the bat. Finally, she stopped evaluating herself based on hitting the ball. And she was like, I'm moving better. And when she was moving better, she ran into the 56, 145, 144 feet. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, and then, and then they're excited. And then the, if you have, you know, all my players have racks, obviously. Um, and if you have racks to have your hitters buy or include them in your program, then they can like practice at home and yeah. have some ownership of that movement and be like, look, I want you, if a little kid, I had a little kid today. I want you to do 50 turns a night in front of your mom. He was nine or 10. And he looked at me like, God, that's so much. So I was like, okay, let's see how long it takes you to do 20 good turns. He was like, okay. And it took like 48 seconds. And I was like, okay, man, I'm asking for like three minutes of work. That's it. And if you do those three minutes of work every single day, that little 10 year old, um, I mean, he's going to get radically better. I mean, he's up five miles an hour already with a terrible turn. Terrible. And, but it's way less terrible than it was. Yeah. And, and that's where was, that's the improvement. Like I'm not comparing him to my best rotators. I'm comparing him to him. You know, I'm comparing the hit, the girl to the girl, you, you to you. Yep. And that's the beauty of the hit tracks that you have and the hit tracks as I have. And the system that we teach is, it's just, it's just so obvious how much it can help you so fast. And yes, it looks different, you know, and when you and I talk on volley, you know, on BR Insider, um, when we talk about it, you know, sometimes you're like, man, you know, these people, I think they they expect a certain amount of swings or they expect a certain style of hitting lesson, whatever that is. Man, I'll tell you what, at my evals, I flat out tell them if you hit the, the next time you come back, like, don't even bring your bat. Don't even bring it, you know, because there's a really high probability that you won't hit anyway. And I don't want you to be disappointed by not hitting. I want you to understand you're not hitting because that's the absolute best thing I can do for you. And if I let you hit before you turn well, I'm actually making you worse. I truly believe that. I'm making it harder for you to accept the rotational skill. And it's, uh, it's different, you know. And a lot of parents have had a lot of lessons when they come in here. And they look at what we do and they're like, wow, this is weird. Like, this is really different. And But at the eval process, they see the $20,000 hit track. They see the printout that we give them from hit tracks. And we explain where their exit velocity ranks, how they're pulling the ball, how high they're hitting it when they pull it versus backside where the hits live on the field, why we shouldn't actually hit it up the middle because the best three players play there, shortstop, second base, center field, like why we shouldn't actually hit it up the middle, you know? Um, and and their jaws are like on the floor. And they're like, well, all my coaches tell me to, to just drive it right at the pitcher. I'm like, yeah, man, like, okay. Like, what do you want me to yeah, say? And, and, unless like, you can muscle up that fly ball it's not going over the center fielder's head. Yeah, like I don't know. in the gap. Yeah, like, I don't want to tell you, like, I, what I'm telling you is your coaches want you to hit well, full stop. If you hit well, they're not going to care how you do it. You can ride a horse around the bases for all I care. They're not going to care either. You can do whatever you want. If you hit well, you will play, and you will play a lot as long as you're not a total jerk, okay? So let's just hit well. That's it. And you're going to hit better however your coach wants you to hit by turning faster. So I can train you if you come see one of my guys for hitting or if you go see Jeff Fry for hitting. <laughs> Either way, you can hit the ball harder if you train your rotation. I don't care if you're a teacher man disciple, if you go see Doug Latta, I don't care if you like Ken Cherry Holmes, I don't care if you like Jamie Savalos, I don't care if you're a Ted Williams disciple or Charlie Lau disciple, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. You can go to Gradham Swing down there in Florida. You can go to Eric Cressy. You can go to anybody you want. If you train your rotational skill first, every swing you take for the rest of your life will be more impactful and have a chance to do more damage.
period that, post- that, that movement is within every swing doesn't every matter who you're swinging with the movement is within the swing you're 100 percent right um, now, i know you've got some things going on over there that you a, a lot of my audience can benefit from i mean you brought up the 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 volley that you've got going on yeah br br insider yes he's got br insider going on the learn to turn group which is a free community where everybody who loves baseball and softball hitting is just benefiting from you know there are ideas being bounced back and forth from pro college coaches or professional instructors everybody is in there just sharing information parents athletes are benefiting from it so if you can just go into a little bit of that and, and tell my audience how they can learn from you know what services you're able to offer them sure so uh the learn to turn group is is free and if you just go on facebook and you search learn to turn and then answer a question and join it's, it's again it's free um we would love to have you and you can just see all the content there i mean again it's free um and we're going to have different things uh, we're doing. I do a Facebook Live every Wednesday night at 930 Eastern. So same time as this, just tomorrow. Um, the volley group is uh, called from BR Insider. So there's a free volley group called Learn the Turn. Um, if you're interested in that, you can go to the Learn the Turn Facebook book group. And we have links on there so you can download Volley. Volley is an app. It is free. You have to create an account and then you will be in our group. Don't just download Volley from the App Store because I can't help you then. Come to the Learn to Turn site and, or Learn to Turn Facebook group and get it that way. I also post on Twitter every now and again. If you want if you want me to post on Twitter, tweet at me, at Chaz Pippet. Um, I think that's my Twitter name. Huh, let's look. Yeah, that's what it is. It. Yeah, Chaz underscore, Chaz Pippet. underscore Pippet. C-H-A-S underscore P-I-P-P-I-T-T. Uh, Brandon, I sent, you a, I sent you a question um, in the private chat. They... Um, you can you can find it there. That's also free. Now, BR Insiders, what Brandon's talking about, is an opportunity for you to communicate directly with me about how you rotate, how you hit, approach, anything you want. Um, it can be as cheap as forty nine dollars a month. Um, it's very inexpensive, and for what you get, it's like training with me without coming to see me. You can see my face. You can hear my voice. I can send you a drill. I can send you. I can evaluate what you're doing, um, and you don't have to get. You don't have to have be doing it at the same time as me. Like this is live. Brandon and I are both sitting at a computer right now. Okay. Well, if you send me something at five o'clock, I'm probably in a cage. I can't get back to you, but I can get back to you that night, and you can immediately get to work on it. It's much faster than traditional online lessons, which my business has been doing for eight or nine years. Um, and I was unhappy with how those were going with my students specifically. And so I stopped doing them. Now JK does all our online stuff and he's phenomenal with it. I just want a more personal experience. I want it to be like this. I want you to hear me speak, see my face, hear my inflection, hear it faster. You know, I don't want it to be a video analysis where I draw on you and I send you a, a drill and, you know, it takes three days for me to do it. Like I want it to be fast, as fast as texting. And it is. And and it's been really fun. Uh, we haven't really like opened that up to everybody yet. Uh, Brandon's involved in it. Um, but we've got some really, really good hitting people on there and hours of free content on on the in the volley stuff, too. Um, so it's also called Learn to Turn. Um, again, you can find those links on the Facebook Um so if you if you search learn to learn to turn uh, or learn the turn, you can uh, easily find it. Um, but yeah, I also wrote a book. Wild. Um, so I've been yeah, writing the money maker right here. We'll this see. A- we'll see. It's it's. I'm excited about it. Um, uh, people have been asked, a couple people have been asking me to write a book for a long time, and um, you know I was hesitant at first. Uh, cause I wasn't really sure anybody was going to kind of care about what I have to say. And I guess I really don't know still, um, if anybody's going to care about it, but the book is called learn to turn training and building, building and training rotational skill in baseball and softball players, super dorky title. Yikes. Um, but I've been studying rotation for, I would say 12 years now. 
And we're talking MMA athletes, tennis players, divers, uh, tons of different track athletes, hammer throw, discus, stuff like that, javelin. Um, and I just can boxers. Yikes. So much MMA, so much fighting. Um, and I've just learned so much about how the human body can rotate. And what I realize is in the weight room and in, in the base, baseball practice, softball practice, PE class, we're not training our kids to rotate. We're generally pushing and pulling. And now it's, it's cool to do a bunch of anti-rotation stuff. And really it just falls short. It, if you don't, if you want a kid to be able to like wait on a change up and still have the, the engine to go get a fastball, you have to teach them how to rotate. How do I do this? How do I find a movement solution? And, you know, we do a really, really good job of building training and enhancing that, that movement inside of, of baseball and softball players. But I mean, I've worked with MMA trainers, elite tennis players. Oh gosh, golfers. I've worked with tons of golfers. We used to have a golf simulator here. I don't even know if you knew that, Brandon. Um, but yeah, I do golf lessons periodically, which is hysterical. Uh, cause I'm the worst golfer ever. And I, I don't really even like golf, but man, I guarantee you, I can, I can open up that body and get you hitting the ball farther. I mean, Tyler, who's our business guy here, used to be an instructor here. Um, he's added 40 yards to his drive from doing the stuff that we talk about. And, um, it's a little different than what we do on the baseball side, but it's, it's cool and it works and it's fast and it's five, six minutes a day. And it sounds like one of those infomercials for eight minute abs you see at four in the morning. Um, but it really does work. And, um, the book also comes with a 30 day plan to enhance your turn. It's called 30 days to a faster turn every single day. It tells you exactly what to do <clears throat> with written and video instruction of every single drill. Um, I'll tell you what, it's a beast. It's a beast of a book. It's not, it's not an ebook you can read in 30 minutes. I promise you that. And um, it's something I'm very, very proud of. And the people that have read it, um, you know, we're talking like multiple master's degrees in, in kinesiology, uh, doctors of physical therapy, uh, muscle activation people, uh, hitting coaches, uh, all the way up the big league level. Um, the feedback I'm getting is really good. Big league players and uh, Ryan Mountcastle is uh, the top rookie that we work with. He hit 33 home runs this year for the Orioles. Um, he fully endorsed the book and the Rebels Rack, and you'll be hearing a lot more about that. Uh, it's something he trains with very often. Um, and it, he, you know, it's funny. He was telling me, Chaz, the, the best part about the rack is that no matter what I'm working on with my hitting coaches day to day at big league level, this never gets in the way and it always makes it better. And I was like, dang, that's like wild, you know, like, obviously I believe in the rack. Yeah. But hearing that from a guy who hit 33 home runs in the big leagues at 23 years old. Um, I mean, Ryan has a legitimate chance to make $200 million playing baseball. And he has access to anything he needs, anything he needs, anytime. And this is what he likes the best. And. I'm not telling you I've made Ryan a better hitter. I'm not telling you he's the only one I've he's the only, I'm the only guy he works with. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is rotational skill training that works on your balance, uh, stability, speed, direction, posture, and rotational power. I mean, it helps every hitter every time. And that's all the rack does. And you can hit however you want. I don't care if you're trying to hit Max Scherzer or – you know, Larry Little League up the street. If you turn well, you got a you got a better shot of smashing that ball good or waiting for the change up and then turning fast than if you don't. If so you Ryan, well, you got a good shot to hit the ball hard. Yeah, I mean Ryan coming out and and kind of allowing. You know, it's funny. I called his agent, and you know, I went through his marketing people. It's wild. I've known him for you know five years now since that, right after his first year of pro ball. And, you know, every year we have different goals, right? And we will say, okay, we want to pull the ball in the air more after his first year. Okay. Then his second year and well, after his first year of pro ball, he did what he did. 
And then after his first, second year pro ball, we worked together, did his turns, worked on his rotation. He doubled his home runs and doubled his doubles. That'll work. Third year in pro ball, he led all of the minor leagues in doubles. Fourth year pro ball, he was triple A MVP. Fifth year pro ball was weird COVID year, I guess. And he was kind of like up and down. And then this year he won rookie of the year as voted on by the players. And I had a whole, I would rather have the players tell me I'm rookie of the year than a yeah. bunch of writers, you know, yeah. not that there's anything wrong with writers. I'm a writer too now. Um, but your apparently. peers are who respects you the most. Absolutely. And that's the thing. And if anybody has any questions, please comment on the, in, in the chat. Um, because I would love to answer them. I know Brandon would love to answer them too. Um, but the book comes out Black Friday. Uh, Pre-orders will be a little bit sooner than that. Um, it's only $19. Um, it goes right to your phone. And you have it forever. And um, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm really, really proud of it. And I've worked very hard on it. And um, it's going to make a lot of people better. The people that try it, even the people that even the people that already train here, um, I really think they'd get a better understanding of the rotational skill concepts that I really outline. Split stance balance, how that works. I mean, who talks about that ever? Nobody. And I just find so much clarity for my hitters in rotational skill training. Instead of trying to figure out what went wrong on a given swing. You can go to back to, OK, did I do my one or two rotational skill things correctly that I need to do? And if the answer is no, I know exactly what I need. Yeah, I think between your book that's coming out, you also have the Rebel Rack certification that's still out and is at a very affordable price. I'll, I'm speaking from experience. I, I went back and looked. I bought my first rack in 2018 um, and it's crazy because I kind of got to know you and learned from afar through Twitter. And ironically, we're both North Carolina people. So I'm like, let's, let's jump on the opportunity to get up there and, you know, learn from this guy. And you've been able to impact, you know, what I've been able to do with hitters with your ability to share information through social media and Twitter. And then that got me into the rack. So I go into uh, my first year coaching at the collegiate level. I bring the rat. Everybody's looking at me like, what are we doing? You know, because it's such a misunderstood, but yet simple, effective way to train to hit the ball farther, hit the ball harder and hit the ball harder and farther more consistently. And I think the book, the certification is going to be able to impact my clients that I'm training. Um, and, and everybody who's working with you or anybody who's working with hitters better understand one of the simplest ways to make a hitter of any age move better, move better more consistently, and learn it faster. I mean, I appreciate you saying that, man. That means a lot to me. And, you know, I've watched you grow. You're from, you know, not just coaching in college at a, at a, at a stop or two, but, I mean, you got like a, a, a beautiful setup in your building. I mean, really, really impressive. And I mean, I've been in over 135 facilities across the country. Um, I truly take a lot of pride in knowing, you know, how to train hitters better per square foot, you know, and you, your setup's phenomenal. I mean, there is nothing that your players lack coming to your spot. And that's really cool for me to say, and I don't know, maybe cool for you to hear, because yeah, I've seen so many facilities that really lack, like they just don't have some simple stuff that would really make hitters better. And they spend their money in silly areas. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, there's a million certifications out there. There's a million things you can, you can buy online, gadget, this gadget, that. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. The rebels rack is not exactly like a fun training tool. Like uh, that's not it. I'm trying to make it efficient and effective. Right. Um, and hitting really well in a game is super fun. And being able to go to any college camp and have the coaches like stop what they're doing when you're hitting to be like, dang, that girl hits the ball freaking hard. That guy yeah. smashes like that swing is violent. Like, whoa, 
there's so many hitters that these coaches see. I, ladies and gentlemen, you you need to have a, a swing and a skill and a speed that jumps off the page, jumps off the field. And if you don't, you just hit a bunch of singles. That coach has to see you play over and over and over and over and hopefully remember, oh, yeah, Jennifer had two singles last time I saw her play. She got two hits today too, huh? What if she doesn't remember? Yeah. What if the coach was, dang, man, Jonathan had two hits the last three times I've seen him play. All singles, huh? That guy can, that guy can move the ball. Well, what if the guy before you hit a 380-foot jack over the scoreboard and they're busy writing his name down while you're hitting? Yeah. It happens all the time. Coaches miss, you know? And and if you hit, you don't sit. And if you're the hitter pitcher sphere, coaches are going to find you. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. You better believe it. And if you can take loud batting practice at a camp, that's the first step. Yeah, you got to hit in the game. You got to hit in the game. But if you get take that loud batting practice and then you hit a couple singles, they're like, wow, power potential in BP, saw that. Good quality hitter, saw that. Now, assuming you brought your glove with you and you can catch and throw, that's four tools. <laughs> yeah. That's four tools right there. And, you know, some are fast, some are slow. You know, we'll figure it out. But it's um, it's a really, really fun thing to see those, those kids look at you and be like, I never knew that I could do this. And the reality is you can't make somebody physically superior in 30 minutes, 40 minutes, or a week. You can't do it. It's not possible, right? And when I say physically superior, I mean they're not like stronger, bigger, heavier, taller. That's not how we work. That's not how yeah, you didn't grow overnight. No. What you can do is you can make them better at a skill and give them something that they can buy into and practice on their own without a bat, without a ball, without mom and dad, without a coach, that they can have full autonomy over when they do it, where they do it, how they do it. And hopefully that sounds appealing to the coaches, parents, and players listening right now because I haven't found a better way to do it. And all I do is look. All I do is read. All I do is look. All I do is try. I try to break the progression every single year. J.K. White has been with me 12 years. Um, came to me with Eric Tyler, and they said, we want to change the progression. And I'm not going to lie to you. I was pissed. I was pissed. Because, like, that's my baby. Like, the progression is how you how you do the movement with the rubble trap, okay? It's how we build the stride, how we build the front leg, how we build the adjustability. I mean, it is baseball rebellion. It is softball rebellion. And they wanted to change it. They said it was broken. So I listened and I pushed back loudly, hardly, well, hardly, aggressively, pushed back hard. And damn it, they were right. And we changed the progression. And I'm glad we did because the hitters are better now significantly and that's the beauty of having the group of guys i have and the style of management that i have is that we all can speak from the newest guy to jk anybody can say what they think and then you know it's a meritocracy of ideas the best ideas win the best if you can prove it we're going to do it and they were right I wasn't very good at the time of teaching hip hinge initially and hip hinge into side bend mechanics. Um, I was wrong. Now I was getting really good results, but not as good as now. Hey, now they're better. And they're better. And they're better because JK was and Eric were willing to come to me. And they're better because I was willing to listen. And I was willing to listen to them because I see their work and I know how smart they are and I see their hitters. And I watch what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And they've earned the right to tell me that I'm wrong. Um, and I value their opinion greatly. 
I mean, JK, Eric, Luke, um, Ryan, Corey. Um, I mean, just everybody. This is such a big part. I mean, Tyler, when he was doing instruction, Gabe, when he was doing instructions, now doing physical therapy, Garrett, when he was here, you know. I mean, Casey Judge is a guy, I think he's in the Twins organization now. You know, I taught, a, I, I, you can still find on the internet, if you search tall posture baseball rebellion or something like that, you will see me talk about a video where I'm like, yeah, hinging is bad. And I, and I show a case study where hinging was bad for a hitter. Well, I, I was wrong. And I stood right next to Casey and he just eviscerated me in an article like three months after that. And he That's was the right, thing right, right, there. I stood right there and I, then he just crushed everything I said. And we left the old article up and we put a disclaimer at the top. This is what we used to teach. We were wrong. Here's where you should go now. Or you can go ahead and read, but then go to this. The ability to grow as a hitting coach is impactful on the players that you're coaching. And unfortunately, we have a lot of people in the industry who haven't grown in decades. And they're not really helping their hitters as efficiently as they could. Yeah. And um, they're not. And it's, it's a bummer. And, you know, I didn't play in the big leagues, but I have coached players. Um, when you talk about the combined earnings uh, worth almost half a billion dollars. And on the female side, you know, we had 14 girls sign division one this year. Just imagine how much money and opportunity that is for their families. You know, some of which have never had player people in their family go to college. And that's not possible without rotational skill in this. I couldn't have done that from the barn. I don't care how hard I tried, how much I worked. Couldn't have done it without it. No shot. And um, that is the God's honest truth. So that, that one piece of equipment has transformed kids who for me, for me personally, kids that I train when I get them at 11 and 12 years old, because the next year or two is going to determine if they keep playing the sport or, or if they decide not to. And at 11 and 12 years old, using the rack, using the rotational movement series, and they hit that first home run and the first home run turns into number two and number three, something they never thought they were able to do. And then they end up staying in the game longer because the bottom line is if you get handcuffed as a, as a young player at 12 years old, when you get to the big field, you don't have the rotational movement. You don't have the rotational speed, the rotational strength. It's not fun to them anymore when they can't hit. But at 11 and 12, that rack has kept so many kids playing the game when they transition from the small field to the big field because they just got more efficient. They got faster. They were able to hit line drives over the infield. And those really good line drives they got over the infield kept carrying and went over the wall. And I, I've got one kid who's 100 pounds. Had, he's in the fifth grade. Hit six home runs this fall. People come up to him after AAU tournaments. Where'd you learn to hit? This is this is a funny story. They come up to his dad, who's helping coach. Like, did you teach him how to hit like that? And his dad goes, I don't know. You ask him. He goes, No, sir. Brandon Matthews taught me how to hit like that. Uh, but he says it with the most serious face. But you know, his dad had a lot to do with changing his swing because he brought him to me, and he was willing to buy into doing the rack turns, doing the progressions, doing the homework. And when you have people like that, they're fun to work with and you can really help a kid love the game and stay in the game a long time, whether they're baseball players or softball players. And and with baseball, like obviously, like the field grows. It grows in middle school, it grows in high school, it grows in college and it grows in the pros. OK, so what you've got to realize and Michael, I saw your question. I'll get to it in just a second. What you've got to realize um, is the bats grow, too. So you can't swing that 32-21 U-Triple-S-A rocket launcher as a sixth Bad. grader in Durham. you got to swing a BB core, drop three, okay? I don't care if you're 60 pounds or 160 pounds. When you're in sixth grade, if you live in Durham and you go to public school, you're swinging a drop three. And guess what? If you can't swing it, you can't play. Bad. And so the rotational skill side of what we do allows these skinny little kids to swing these big bats and make the team. Now they, some of them don't play much at first, but 
the advantage of practicing every day as a sixth grader is exponential over that sixth grader that didn't make it. Even if your practices are just, you know, not that great, you're still taking grounders every day. You're still throwing every day. You're still going to, you're going on bus trips with your buddies. You're eating out after games. Like there's more to it. There's more to it. And learning to swing that big bat is a big freaking deal. And understanding that it does not matter what your little travel ball coaches say about big bats, little bats. Like when you have to make teams, like make a middle school team, make a high school team. There are no weight limits. There's no age groups. High school is 18U baseball. Yeah. The game don't care how big you are. Don't nope. the game doesn't care if you're ready to swing it or not. Nope. It'll just leave you behind. It'll just leave you behind. And I tell kids this all the time. Then I'm gonna answer Michael's question. Coaches want to make easy decisions. Baseball, softball doesn't matter. If 20 kids try out, there's five of them that are awesome. They're making it. Easy decision. There's five of them that are terrible. They're cut. Easy decision. So now there's 10 kids fighting for six or seven spots. Make the coach make an easy decision. Have an explosive swing. Handle that big bat. Handle it. Don't let... Don't miss out on an opportunity because your facial hair hasn't come in yet in sixth grade, right? I mean, it's just a race to puberty. That's all middle school sports is, boys and girls. But you can overcome that race if you know how to turn. And you can swing that big bat if you know how to turn. But if you go to that middle school trout and you try to swing your U-trip, they're going to be like, whoa, what are you doing, kid? Here you go. And if you've never swung a BB core and you've never practiced turning with that kind of weight in your hand, you're dead. Welcome to a new world. You're dead. Well, you don't get you don't get to go to the new world. You get cut. Yeah. And nobody cares how many Kyle Ripken games you've won and world and and how many rings you plastic rings you've got in your yep. in your bedroom. Nobody cares. You can just swing the big bat on the big field and hit it 180 feet to get it out of the infield, or you can't. And if you can't, and you're done. Yeah. If you can't, you're in your backyard trying to figure out how to swing the bat. You didn't want to pick up two years ago when somebody suggested it. Yep. And your parents are, are looking at you like, well, that's just unfair. Nope. It, the rules are the rules. And they've been the rules. And they're going to be the rules. And you better get with it. So Michael asked that, Chaz, many coaches out there may not know about the Rebels Rack Certification Rotational Skill Development Certs. What is the process to get certified? Do you advertise the certification process? So if you go to BaseballRebellion.com, the Rebels Rack Certification exists. It's a great course that really explains a lot of the ways we use the Rebels Rack. It really does. Um, it's probably 100 bucks, um, maybe less. It You actually become certified to teach, which is pretty sweet. Um, and if you're a high school coach, middle school coach, travel ball coach, it's a really great place uh, to start. Um, the book... Um, that talks about like how I started baseball rebellion, the different coaches I've met and what I learned from them. Um, the honest parts of the book when I was wrong and how I've changed. Uh, and then obviously the rotational skill development and why we do things the way we do, how motor learning works. Like it really puts a lot of information right in the palm of your hands. That pre-sale, I think is later this week, possibly even next week. And then it comes out officially on, on cyber Monday or black Friday. I can, honestly, I can't remember one of those two, I think cyber Monday. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I really hope I sell a ton of those books because I really believe they'll help a ton of people. Um, but you'll be hearing a lot of stuff about the book coming out, uh, very, very soon on my Twitter at Chaz, Chaz underscore pivot or at, uh, BR rebellion, uh, my two Twitters, um, you know, I baseball rebellions, Twitter is a lot more calm than mine. Uh, I tend to have a lot of opinions on a lot of things, and uh, but I'm also um, a pretty nice dude if you reach out to me. So reach out. If you have a question, I'll help you, uh, Michael. So I hope that I hope that answered you. Um, but I mean, I think I think every player I have that's you know high school kid, uh, older middle school kid, and a lot of the parents I have would really benefit, regardless of the kid's age, on reading. The book um, and learning about how baseball rebellion started, why it started, um, why it's still going, 
what we're rebelling against, like why it's called that in the first place. Um, and this is just the first book. I'm 25% of the way through the second book. And my third book will be um, probably middle of next year will come out. So I'm going to be writing a lot. I can tell you from experience, I did the certification and I thought I knew how the rat worked before the certification. It just enhanced everything we already did because it allowed you to identify incorrect movements, um, make the correct movements even better, how to use it to time up pitches in a game. Um, so how, how to prepare to hit breaking balls, how to prepare to be on time for the fastball, not just learn the movement, but how to implement the movement in an actual game type situation and, and train movement flaws and then add bands to it, you know, to make it stronger, make it faster. So having the certification, I can say it's very beneficial. It made my instruction better. And coupling that with the book that's about to come out, you're basically about to unleash some really good stuff on the athletes you're working with. And, means and a lot. if you're going to invest in that, you're going to invest in the future of your athlete. So I'm definitely jumping on the book. I'd recommend getting on it. I can't wait for it to come out um, and, and definitely do the certification too, because it's going to help you help people get better. That mean, I, I, you know, thank you. I, you know, that means a lot. It's a, uh, it's funny as I hear people talk about the certification in the book and the way that they, when they do it, if they really coach hitters, um, how they talk about it, it's, 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 it's kind of a wild experience uh, for me to listen to because, you know, you, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you're certified in a couple different things. What are your certifications? Yeah, I mean, I've got on base you, um, your certification, driveline certification. So, I mean, I've, I've looked at everything I could put my hands on and, you know, movement training is one of the most consistent things that relates to everything related to the baseball and softball swing. Especially, I mean, if you look at on base university where they're trying to diagnose your mobility weaknesses or your stability weaknesses, the rebel rack movement ties directly into some of those inefficiencies. Yep. And and a lot of times, uh, you know, I obviously I work with a lot of college and pro athletes and they have these elaborate uh, mobility warm ups. I don't really know what I would call them. Uh, they just they do all this stuff, whether it's like, you know, quadruped, you know, thoracic spine or hip flips or different different things and then you watch them swing and that movement that they were just doing so well the the mobility they had from a, all fours or whatever it doesn't show up in their swing and it's like well where'd all your mobility go and they never transition from i'm doing this mobility work because somebody told me to do it to how do i make my body move that way when i swing and the rack changes that like that is not a problem with the rebels rack um it is a standing movement that directly relates to the swing immediately immediately yep. and it's um there has never been anything that i've done that's been better than that rack and the one thing that I will say is when the, the book comes out and people see what comes with that for $19.99, from a value perspective, I've never put anything out like that in my life. And from a completeness of a program perspective, I've never put anything out like that in my life. And the clarity that I have gained personally from writing the book and how important the next two books are going to be um, has been really, really positive for me emotionally and as a teacher. You know, I, I just see the game and the movement so clearly now and because I had to take the time to organize my thoughts. Right. Um, and you can probably tell just from like talking to me that I'm a creative, you know, like a, uh, I'm not super regimented. I'm, I'm very disciplined, but I'm not super like regimented. Um, you know, everybody learns to turn 
the same way. And then you can hit however you want. If you come to Baseball Rebellion and, and Softball Rebellion, you see our hitters, you'll see leg kicks, toe taps, no strides, open stance, closed stance. But you're going to see everybody turning and fast. You're going to see everybody's going to turn, whether they're swinging a baseball bat or a softball bat. You could, it's just a matter of are you turning as good as you can be? And our softball girls are, are flat out better than our boys, like point blank. And that's because they have anatomical advantages to in rotation. They have open, more open hip sockets. They have uh, looser lumbar spines. They have less lat mass, which can be good and bad, but sometimes it can be good because they're less muscle bound. And they have less overall physical strength, which means they don't try to muscle the ball like boys will. They tend to really turn well because that's the best choice for them. You know, we get some of these boys who can bench press 300 pounds and squat 500 pounds. I mean, they feel really good when they push. And they might hit well when they push too, but they don't hit the best when they push. And tr- teaching them and tricking them into turning the first time and taking away all that muscle strength that they've worked for, not that strength is bad. Strength is good. Go go lift. But I'm not trying to get you to bench press the bat. I'm trying to get you to turn. And getting people to feel that is – uh it's hard sometimes, but not with the rack. I mean, really, not with the rack. Well, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free comment, throw the questions in. Um, I'm going to leave it on Chaz to uh, give you guys any last bits of information or feedback, tips, um, contact info for him. Um, sure. He's, he's, he's been a great resource for me, so definitely take advantage of it. Well, it means a lot to me that you say that. I, I did mean to ask you this earlier. Um, of all the certifications you have, what would you say is the most valuable part of, of the ones that you have, all three? The most valuable mm-hmm. part is being able to directly impact a hitter in one lesson, which relates to, you know, the movement training that you're you're putting out, um, which is often misunderstood, which is why I wanted to bring you on because I can't tell you how many times I have parents who come in and they're asking, you know, what is the rack? I've heard of it. What does it do? Um, And, but then in one lesson, I can have an immediate impact on making this hitter better. Like you said, without trying to talk mechanics, without trying to change their swing too much, but just making them use the rotation they're going to have to have in the swing that they always use anyway. Um, So that's been really beneficial for me. Um, And it was simple. It was well put together, easy to use. Um, but you, you've got to be a grower, you've got to be a learner and you've, you've got to figure out what works and what doesn't work for you. You're hundred percent right. Uh, more specifically, what do you think is the mo- best part of the on base, you, the drive line, And then, I mean, you've talked about my stuff, so you don't have to answer that. I'd say on base, you just kind of helps you a little bit with, uh, identifying why this athlete might not be able to do X, Y, Z. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. I told you about this kid who um, he came, might be on right now. Yeah, he came in, and one of the on-base U tests is just simply, you know, palm up, palm down. Can, do you have that range of motion? Well, this kid cannot palm up at all, either hand. His um, his wrist is fused into the bones that run into his arm. So he the only way he can go palm up is to do this move his whole body he can't go palm up with just his wrist so you know not even thinking to test something like that before we even hit has been beneficial because he he can still hit he just got to hit a different way um and it's not going to look the same as as someone else Uh, and he's going to have to use his body differently um you know looking at the driveline certification a lot of that went into some of the biomechanical pieces that you know, I wasn't as familiar with. Um, you mean like KVS, 4D, like that kind of stuff? And things like that. So yeah, how to read the graphs. Okay. Yep. Different pieces. Um, because I've messed around with 4D motion. Mm-hmm. I've looked at KVS before. I've never taken the KVS class because I don't have the KVS right now. But I've used 4D motion for a little while. Uh, but couldn't really help my hitters as much as I wanted to because I couldn't read the graphs as efficiently as I should. So the driveline certification was really beneficial for the biomechanical aspect of it for me. And, and just, you know, that was an area of weakness for me that I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about. 
That's great. Um, yeah, I was just curious. I haven't done the uh, driveline certification. Uh, on base U, I have read their entire certification. Uh, I also have not done it, but I've read it. Um, and there's value there. I do think one thing that's interesting with on base U that that always kind of jumps out to me, and I'll, and I'm not saying bad about on base U at all or TPI or any of that. But if you constantly look for a flaw, you're going to find it. And I choose to think a little bit differently in my life now. Um, I, I look for, I assume athletes are healthy and mobile and not strong, but healthy and mobile because I don't really get athletes who have like fused vertebrae or <laughs> calcified hips and stuff. You know, like, what are we talking about? We're not NFL players, you know, unless they've been in like a car wreck or something like you know what I mean? Like generally the athletes that come to hitting lessons are healthy ish and, and 99% healthy. So if they have a tiny little flaw and say their internal rotation or external rotation of their feet or something like, yeah, I can identify that with an on base U test or, a, or an FMS test or whatever. Okay. But like a nine year old didn't come here to talk to me about their internal rotation of their foot. They came here to freaking hit better. They want, to hit take, their buddy. Huh? they want to hit farther than their buddy. Yeah. And if I take the lesson time to work on a 10 year old's quadruped uh, thoracic spine rotation, their dad is going to fire me. <laughs> Point blank. Because the kid's 10. And what are we doing? So. I, I think that identifying the flaws can be really, really valuable after, not before, with healthy, uninjured athletes. Now, I'll say the other side is if you have an athlete coming off an injury or who's older, uh, I mean, I work with a 57-year-old guy every week. Um, he's an awesome dude, man. And we talk about cars. We talk about his kids. And, I mean, shoot, I could be one of his kids, maybe. And um, I think he's 57, um, but he's gotten way better and he turns better and he has less pain in his back and he has more mobility and he's seeing differences in the weight room from the rotational work he's doing, you know, and it's really cool. And right after him, I work with a six year old. So there's a 51 year age gap between those two lessons. <laughs> and guess what? They're both talking about rotational skill. They both use a rack, different sizes. They both have rack homework and they both are getting way better. And it's super cool. So Jen um, is a division one coach um, at uh, Binghamton. And I've known her for a few years when she was at York, she was division three head coach there. Uh, then she was at NC state. Then she was at Wilmington and now she's at Binghamton and, um, She's on the chat and she just wrote like two really friendly comments that I'm I hadn't even talked to her about the book yet. Um, so I'm like seeing this in real time. Wow. Thank you, Jen. I mean, you um, I've learned a lot from you, too, and you've allowed me to work with some with with your hitters at, at York and with your daughter, with your son. And um, as a parent, I mean, that means a ton to me because you know a ton. And you're one of the people that I truly believe in as a hitting coach. So is Brandon. And, um, you know, seeing you say that is just like outrageous. Like a, it's like almost making me tear up. I got to get myself together. But I mean, when you think about, when I try to explain to people how much time I have spent studying rotation, I just don't think I do a good enough job of explaining it. I mean, hours a day, years of my life to turning, not hitting, to turning. And that is applicable in so many areas. And understanding the concepts that go into Healthy, normal rotation. Healthy, normal rotation. And the skill and, and movements inside of that that make it repeatable 
and effortless and fast with direction and stability. Um, it's transformed everything about baseball rebellion and it's made, you know, it's why, it's why people come here. Um, it's why people fly here from all over the world to train. Saya, so, that's awesome. And, and, you know, honestly, the rack has helped you for sure, but Brandon has helped you for sure. And I love that you wrote that because I can't, I hope the athletes on here, I don't know how many people are on here right now, but I hope if you're a hitter or if you're a parent and you hear what I'm about to say, you really think about it. If you have a truly committed instructor who cares about your child, you are so lucky. And yes, you pay for their time. You pay for their time for those 40 minutes, 30 minutes, hour, whatever. But the amount of time, if you have a truly dedicated instructor who's investing in your child and their business and, and their growth, I mean, they are helping your child exponentially and you just don't even realize it, you know? And I mean, I'll speak about my business. I have five hitting instructors, including myself and one pitching guy. Okay. So I'll just talk about the five hitting instructors. The five hitting instructors on average, my guys work between 50 and 55 hours a week. So in exchange for your five to 10 minutes, we'll say 10 minutes a day for six days a week. That's an hour a week. We're asking for homework just for simple, simple stuff. Five guys are going to give 55 hours in exchange for your one hour. That is a phenomenal investment. That's not 55 to one. What is that? 275 to one? 275 hours for one hour. That's what we give. And the the amount of time that Brandon has spent on driveline cert, on base use cert, rebels rack cert that he's gonna do when he reads the book, um, and the feedback he's gonna give me that I'm gonna learn from, you know. Like that time and the sharing of information on Learn the Turn, on Brandon, on your group, on the BR Insider Volley, if that's free, like on the on my website, which has thousands, like literally hundreds and hundreds of articles, free, all free. And, you know, people talk about, you know, what have you done in the game? And I didn't play in the big leagues. I didn't play pro ball. Um, I didn't really play baseball when I was young, like most people did, or softball. And the gift of that is I didn't have years and years and years of instruction that didn't make sense. I had some that didn't make sense. Uh, but by the time I was getting it, I was old enough to kind of filter it out and be like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. And... I didn't always do the best job of expressing myself with coaches. I didn't always wasn't always the most coachable person in the world. I definitely was somebody that uh, struggled with authority as a young child and as a uh, player. And you know, I really learned from that, and I really value my athletes and the parents that trust trust their children and and the athletes that trust their careers to baseball rebellion, whether they work directly with me or not. Um, and I know Brandon feels the same way. So, yeah, without a doubt. Um, I mean, people ask me all the time, why didn't you start doing lessons sooner? And, you know, I, I coached for 14 years. As um, soon as my playing career ended, which ended at 21 years old, um, you know, I was an average college baseball player. I'm not going to say that I was anything better than that, but. I had a really good high baseball IQ. I knew coaching was what I wanted to do. Um, and I coached for 14 years. My wife and I had our first child in 2019. And in an effort to stay home more, this is the ironic part about it, where, you know, you mentioned all the hours that the instructors put in and how we care about the athletes that we work with. Because um, in an effort to stay home more, my wife and I built our indoor facility in the backyard. It was a huge gamble, a huge risk it's self-funded and I'm a teacher. Um, you know, I'm not paid six figures a year. Um, I teach full time. We put 30 grand into building a building, putting cement, you know, the foundation. And they built it pretty short. They built, it, they built you that know, cement pretty short on you. Yeah. We've, we've started out with my wife goes, what if you can't pay for this? 
And I'm like, I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm just hoping that I can help kids and, you know, it works out. And I've been lucky. This is my second full, this is my second year doing private lessons. And um, I've luckily I've been able to pay the hit tracks off. Um, you know, everything that I'm self-funding, borrowing money, going and getting certifications, trying to be better. Um, and in an effort to stay home with my daughter more, I actually spend more time with the athletes I'm training. It's just beneficial. I'm in my backyard and I'm not gone every weekend at a JUCO game or, um, you know, gone 10 months out of the year, halfway on the road, things like that. So I'm home more, but I'm still putting in a lot of hours with all the hitters I'm training. You know, I'm the website guy. I'm the social media guy. You know, this is a one, a one man show right here. And I'm also doing a full time job in the daytime and, you know, free articles on my website. So there's, it's really a slap in the face when people say, well, you didn't, you didn't play at the big league level. How can, you know, do you really care about kids? Are you doing it for the money? Like, no, I'm not making a ton of money out of this. We're definitely doing it because we want to help people and we want to help people grow. And we're doing something that we love or we wouldn't be putting all the hours into it. And we wouldn't care about these athletes failing or not. No. And, and, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like I said, I've been doing this 15 years and I've never been to a signing of an athlete until, um, this past week, I went to, uh, Takiya Nichols signing. And if you really want to Google something, Google baseball rebellion, Takiya Nichols, um, I don't know how to type in the chat, but Brandon, you can Takia T A K I A N I C H O L S Takia Nichols Baseball Rebellion. Um, T A K I A. Yeah. And just watch how she started, and then watch how she is, and she's, um, I mean, essentially going to school on a full ride at a four-year school. And it's, it's funny. Right I remember she, the first video you posted of that girl. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, <laughs> the way her mother and and Takia included me in that, and I've been invited to other signings. Don't get me wrong; I appreciate the invites. I just couldn't go. This one was different. I had to go, and um, you know, I spoke at it and I held it together. And Jen almost got me a second ago with what she just said about my book. You know, I'd be crying on here like a clown jerk. Um, but I do appreciate what you said, Jen. I, I really do. And, um, you know, Saya is saying and Lisa are saying great stuff about YouTube, Brandon. But, you know, I almost lost it twice when I was talking to Tia, when I was talking about, you know, the conversations I've had with her mother around about Takia, both in front of her and not in front of her. Um, the way her mother has worked to support Takia, the way that Takia has worked to make herself as good as she can be. Um, it, it was just uh, seeing what people, hearing what people said about her and the people that came out to support her and her whole family was there, you know? And, you know, I've never met her dad. Um, I don't know that story. And just seeing her mother, how proud she was, and her brother, how proud he was, and how proud the friends were, and knowing that this is a big deal. Um, that's that's putting sweat in the bucket and paving your own way. I mean, it's just it's just so exciting, and I and I'm so happy for her, and um, I'm so happy for all my athletes. Don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, it's I just I hope you guys know how much we care. And I say we because I know Brandon does. And I say we because I know my guys here at BR do. Um, it's truly it's truly a life's work. It's truly a calling. And, you know, if you see my building and you think I'm made of money, uh, you think wrong. And COVID's been really hard on a lot of small businesses. And I'm definitely a small business. Brandon's a small business. And so, I mean, Brandon just came with some shirts. I just bought a shirt. I'm very excited to get it. Double XL had to pay a little extra because I'm a giant person. Um, but it's hard to get a shirt on these 52 jacket shoulders. I don't know. I gotta gotta chill out with that. I have lost 20 pounds though. Ha! Um, okay. So I'm excited about that. But you know, support Brandon. You know, support Baseball Rebellion. Support the book. Support his T-shirts. Support his online lessons. Like please, because. Guys like us, 
I mean, we love it. it it's a passion. Um, and, and it's something that, uh, is super important. Saya, when it's ready to come out, uh, it's, it's, it'll pre-order, I think this week, late this week, next week, and then it'll come out all the way, uh, Cyber Monday. My Tyler just texted me, stop saying Black Friday, my bad, Cyber Monday. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, you know, share it, tweet it, you know, it's super inexpensive and I, and I feel so confident that, that you'll really enjoy it. And, um, Brandon, I can't thank you enough for having me. Um, it means a lot that you wanted me to be on and, uh, that you given me access to your players and, and to your, to your group. And obviously we're going to do the same over on learn to turn. I'm going to have you on one of my lives here coming up soon. Um, I'm hoping that, um, I get a little better at Facebook lives. This seems really easy. <laughs> Uh, cause I'm not afraid to screw up a Facebook live, but I'll be live tomorrow night at nine 30. I'd love to have you. Some of y'all come, um, we'll be talking about some similar things, but you know, when you learn to turn the possibilities are endless and, uh, you can truly find your ceiling, whatever that is. Thanks Chaz for coming on, man. Thank you guys so much, Michael. Appreciate it. Jerry, thank you for coming. Um, join the group, learn to turn. BaseballRebellion.com. Make sure you support Brandon and his shirts because the shirts look pretty freaking sweet. I'm definitely going to be rocking one very, very soon. All right, man. Take it easy. Bye now. Have a great day.